Muy buenas noches, amados amigos y hermanos presentes aquí en San José de los Campos, República del Brasil. Good evening, beloved friends and brethren present here es para mí in San José de los Campos, Brasil. It is a great blessing to be with you again, to share some moments of fellowship around the divine program and to see where we are in God's program and thus see what God has for us at this end time and thus to see whether God forgot about Latin America and the Caribbean or not. Let's see in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 to 10, and Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. Dice así, yo estaba en el Espíritu en el día del Señor, y hoy detrás de mí una gran voz como de trompeta. It says the following. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And now, let's read in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. Yo soy la raíz y el linaje de David, la estrella resplandeciente de la mañana. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bride and morning star. En el día postrero. Y esa es la voz que nosotros queremos Escuchar. Our subject for this occasion is the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ at the last day. And that is the voice we want to hear. The voice of our beloved Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated if you are so kind. Es muy importante saber It is very important to know that in order to hear God's voice, we need to find through whom God is speaking. Surely the Lord God will do nothing without first revealing his secrets to his servants his prophets. That is what he says through the prophet Amos in chapter 3, verse 7. And through the prophet Moses, he says in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15 and on, To Dios. A él oiré. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise him up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Mas a cualquiera que no oyere mis palabras que él hablare en mi nombre, yo le pediré. And it shall come to pass 
that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Dice Dios por medio del profeta Moisés. That is what God says through the prophet Moses. God has established that he will put his word in the mouth of the prophet he sends. And when that prophet speaks that word, that is God's voice to the people of that time. A través de toda la historia bíblica. That is why you can see that God has sent prophets throughout all of biblical history. La voz de Dios para el pueblo. And God's voice to the people el has been in them. San Pablo nos dice en Hebreos capítulo 1, verso 1 al 2. St. Paul the Apostle tells us in Hebrews chapter Dios 1, verse 1 to 2. Muchas veces y de muchas maneras en otro tiempo los padres por los profetas God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers en estos by the prophets días nos ha hablado por el hijo a quien constituyó heredero de todo y por quien a sí mismo hizo hath in these hijo last days spoken unto us by his son whom he had appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds ahora now we can see that God spoke in the Old Testament through the prophets. It was the voice of God to the Hebrew people through men who lived among the Hebrew people. But many people did not understand that the message they brought was the voice of God to the people. When individuals or a people ignore this truth, they cannot hear the voice of God and be aware that God is speaking to the people. And therefore to all human beings. And many people rise against that messenger of God. That is why God's prophets were persecuted. Because the people did not understand that they were the voice of God. For the word of God was in them. And they were anointed with the Spirit of God. It was God's voice to the people on each occasion. In Zechariah chapter 7, verses 11 to 12, God speaks to us, telling us, through the prophet Zechariah, about the Hebrew people's behavior dice, towards God's no prophets. And he says, But they refused no to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Por medio de los profetas primeros vino por tanto gran enojo de parte de Yea, they made de their ejércitos. hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Por medio de quien venía la palabra de Dios. Through whom did the word of God come to the Hebrew people? Through whom did God's voice come to the Hebrew people? By the prophets who had the Spirit of God in them. And he would put that word in the hearts and in the mouths of those prophets. 
and they would speak that word. But the people did not want to hear, and therefore came a great wrath from God. And now we can see why the Hebrew people have had so many problems. Throughout the life of the Hebrew people's existence, they have had more centuries with problems than without problems. And why is that? Because they have not wanted to hear God's voice in their different ages. And that is why a great wrath has come from God. Notice in Deuteronomy chapter 30, God speaks to the Hebrew people and says, And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. And the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee and thou shalt call them to mind among the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee and shall return unto the Lord thy God and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Y te hará volver Jehová tu Dios a la tierra que heredaron tus padres y será tuya y te hará bien y te multiplicará más que tus padres. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Jehová tu Dios tu corazón. Y el corazón de tus descendientes, de tu descendencia, para que ames a Jehová tu Dios con todo tu corazón y con toda tu alma, a fin de que And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. Y pondré Jehová tu Dios todas estas maldiciones sobre tus enemigos y sobre tus aborrecedores que te persiguieron. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee. Ahora vean ustedes como Dios habla de bendiciones y de maldiciones. Now notice how God speaks of blessings and curses. Las maldiciones han venido por causa de no For the Hebrew people, curses have come because they have not heard God's voice. Es por escuchar la voz de Dios. And blessings come by hearing God's voice. De Dios. Ahora podemos ver And following God's program. 
Now we can see that at the end time, God has promised the restoration for the Hebrew people. According to Ezekiel chapter 37, De, de personas muertas, where he shows them a valley of bones of dead people, a valley full of dry bones. And he tells the prophet Ezekiel, this is the house of Israel, a valley full of dry bones. And he asks the prophet Ezekiel, can these bones live? And the prophet Ezekiel says to God, O Lord, thou knowest. Because Ezekiel knows one thing, that with God nothing is impossible. And if God has it in his program to resurrect that valley of dry bones, then God will do it. For the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, he will raise people in eternal bodies. People who, some of them, have died 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 years ago. And their bones have already turned to dust. And if God will raise the dead in Christ, even though their bodies and their bones have turned to dust, he will also raise the Hebrew people as a nation. Even though it is a valley of dry bones, there's already something there. But from among the Gentile elect, for some of them, not even the dust of their bones remains because they have died thousands of years ago. Some of them, a thousand years ago or a thousand five hundred years ago. St. Paul, St. Peter, and the Apostles. But Christ has said, I will raise them up at the last day. And at the last day, he will also raise the Hebrew people as a nation and they will be the chief of all the nations. And what does that mean? Well, that Jerusalem will be the capital of the world. And the territory of Israel will be the federal district. And all the laws for all the nations will come out of there. And all teaching will come out of there, both in the spiritual field and in the political field as well. And the Messiah... The king of Israel will also be there on the throne of David. But God has to raise the Hebrew people as a nation. And since the Spirit of God was driven away from the Hebrew nation because they rejected the Messiah in his first coming, the Spirit of God went to the Gentiles. It moved through Asia Minor, then through Europe, then through North America, and then where? To Latin America and the Caribbean. And from there, it will return to the Hebrew people. Now we can see that God told the prophet Ezekiel, Call the Spirit of God. Call the Spirit into those bodies. And call it from where? Let's see. It is because the Spirit of God has been traveling through different places in the manifestation of the seven Spirits of God which run to and fro through the whole earth. And that journey of the Spirit of God running to and fro through the whole earth has been made through the different ages or stages of the gentle church. We find the Spirit of God among the Gentiles. 
in Asia Minor, manifested in St. Paul. And St. Paul said, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. St. Paul was the voice of Christ to that first age of the gentle church back there in Asia Minor. And he established the divine word for that first age. Then, the Spirit of God went to France, and there he raised up Irenaeus as the messenger of the second age or stage of the Church of Jesus Christ among the Gentiles. And through Irenaeus, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit spoke to the people. And he was the voice of God, the voice of Jesus Christ to that second stage of the Church among the Gentiles. Then came the third stage, and he raised up Martin, and the third age of the gentle church was fulfilled in France and Hungary, and Martin was the voice of Christ to the third age of the church among the Gentiles. Then came the fourth stage, and God raised up Columba. He anointed him with his spirit. He put his word in his mouth for that fourth stage, which was fulfilled in Ireland and Scotland. And he was the voice of God, the voice of Jesus Christ to that fourth age of the Church of Jesus Christ among the Gentiles. Then came the fifth stage or age of the Gentile Church which was fulfilled in Germany, where he raised up Reverend Martin Luther, who, anointed by the Spirit of God, brought the word of Christ to the people. He was the voice of Christ to that fifth stage of the church among the Gentiles, and it was fulfilled in Germany. Then came the sixth stage of the church among the Gentiles, which was fulfilled in England, where God raised John Wesley and put his word in his mouth. And he brought the message of Christ to the church of Jesus Christ. It was Jesus Christ and John Wesley speaking to his church and speaking to all human beings. Because Christ has spoken to his church and to the entire world through these messengers. Later came the seventh age of the Gentile Church, and God raised up Reverend William Branham in North America, where the seventh age of the Gentile Church was fulfilled, and he was the voice of Christ to the seventh age of the gentle church. Through him, Jesus Christ spoke to his church, and he spoke to every human being, because Christ speaks to his church, and he speaks to every human being through the messenger of each age. And after these seven stages of the church among the Gentiles have passed, we have seen how the voice of Christ has been speaking on this earth through his angel messengers of the seven gentle church ages. It was the voice of Christ in each angel messenger. They were the voice of Christ to the people. And now we have come to the last day. And we can see how Christ was manifested in those seven stages of the Gentile Church. It was the Spirit of God running to and fro through those seven stages among the Gentiles. It was the manifestation of the seven spirits of God, in other words, of the Holy Spirit in seven manifestations through seven angel messengers. God sent men, and at this end time, Jesus Christ in Holy Spirit goes on to Latin America and the Caribbean. And in Latin America and the Caribbean, he speaks to us all these things which must shortly be done in the age of the cornerstone. The age of the cornerstone. 
is the stage that pertains to this end time in the church of Jesus Christ. And the fulfillment of that stage is in Latin America and the Caribbean. Christ did not forget about the Latin American and Caribbean people. He had us in his mind and he has given us the greatest blessing he had to give to his church. The Church of Jesus Christ has the greatest blessing in Latin America and the Caribbean. That is why he says, Come up hither. Where? To the age of the cornerstone. And I will show you things which must be hereafter. In other words, after the things that have already happened, in the seven ages of the gentle church. Now the things that will happen in the age of the cornerstone will be made known by Christ. And he speaks with that voice of trumpet in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, saying, with that voice of trumpet, come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter, these things that have already happened. And now, through whom will he be speaking to us all those things which must surely come to pass? Surely he will do nothing without first revealing his secrets to his servants, his prophets. He says in Revelation chapter 22 verse 16 whom will he send? And he will be for all the churches and for all the human beings. And he will be the voice of Christ because Christ will be manifested in him in the last manifestation of Christ among his church. And through him, Christ will be speaking to us all these things which must shortly be done. And who is that person? Let Jesus say it himself. He is the person who Christ has spoken about the most. He is the one most identified by Christ out of all the messengers Christ would send. Revelation chapter 22, verse 16 says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things at the churches. Who is the one sent by Jesus Christ? His angel messenger. And what is he sent for? To testify these things in all the churches, and to all the churches, and to every human being, and to every nation, people, nation, and tongue. He is the one sent by Jesus Christ. That is the voice of Jesus Christ at the last day. Revelation 22, verse 6 says, And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. How are the things which must shortly be done made known? They are made known through the angel of Jesus Christ, anointed with the Spirit of Christ, and through him, Jesus Christ will be speaking to his church and to every people, nation and tongue, to every human being who lives at this end time. Because he is the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ at the last day to all the churches and to every human being. And the last day is the seventh millennium. And if we add to the calendar the years it is behind, then we have already been in the seventh millennium for some time. We already began the new millennium some time ago. But if we leave the calendar the way it is, then there's only a year and a few months left 
para llegar al año 2000. Y llegar el And thus, until al, al, al the seventh millennium, millennium which is the last Dios. day before God. Pero se le habrá a Dios su But could God's calendar have fallen behind? God's calendar does not fall si behind. No And calendario. if his calendar has not fallen behind, then we are already at the en last day. At the time when every human being is called to be hearing the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ at the last day. And now we have seen which is the voice of Jesus Christ. It is the voice of the angel of the covenant, of the angel of the Lord through his angel messenger. His angel messenger, who is the last prophet Jesus Christ sends to earth, is the prophet of the dispensation of the kingdom. He is a dispensational prophet. It is the first time Jesus Christ sends a dispensational prophet to his church. That is the greatest kind of prophet God sends to the earth. There are only seven of those kind of prophets. Adam, Seth, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And why are there seven? Because there are seven dispensations with seven dispensational messages. That is why St. John, the Apostle, tried to worship the angel of Jesus Christ. That angel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the messenger of Jesus Christ, the instrument of Jesus Christ, who gave John the revelation of the book of Revelation. In the decade of the 90s, of the first century of the Christian era. He is the second man who ministers the word of God before coming to earth in human flesh. The first who was it? Our beloved Lord Jesus Christ. And the second is the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why you can see a similarity in the angel of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ. Although the angel is not the Lord Jesus Christ, but notice the similarity we find throughout the Bible. Jesus Christ says of his angel, because he is the wise and faithful servant, And he is the overcomer at the last day. He is the one he is speaking about when he says, And he that overcometh to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. As Christ received of the Father, now Christ grants this to the overcomer, which will be his angel messenger at the last day. In other words, the same thing the Father did with Jesus is what Jesus does with his angel. He also says, To him that overcomes, will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that receives it. He says, 
he that receives it. He doesn't say they that receive it, but he that receives it. And he also says to him that overcomes. He doesn't say to them that overcome. But to him that overcomes, I will give a white stone. The message is always directed to the messenger. And the people who are with the messenger receive God's blessings that God gives a messenger because he shares them with the people who receive his message. And that is why the people who receive his message are the people who receive a prophet, and therefore they receive a prophet's reward. They receive the benefits for which he sent that prophet. The wise and faithful servant is the one who gives the spiritual food to the children of God in the house of God. And he receives that food first because it is the word. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He receives that revealed word from Christ and he shares it with all God's sons and daughters in the age in which he is given to live. And the wise and faithful servant who is living at the last day at the end time is the one who will receive the great blessings. Those great blessings being materialized in him but everything was reflected in the seven angel messengers. Now, that is why he says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. And the other messengers of the seven ages have already gone. And now, it's been given to us to live at the end. The end of time, the end of the world, the end of the ages, because we are in a new age, the age of the cornerstone, and the new dispensation is overlapping with the dispensation of grace. Now it's been given to us to live at the end of the world. And which would be the sign of the end of the world? Jesus Christ said, The Son of Man shall send forth His angels. The end of the world is the time of the harvest. The harvest of the wheat and also the harvest of the tares. The tares will be cast in the furnace of fire into the great tribulation where they will be burned. But the wheat is gathered and put in God's garner. And the dead in Christ will be raised in eternal bodies. And we who are alive will be changed. And we will be taken to the house of our Heavenly Father, to the great marriage supper of the Lamb. Now we can see that these blessings are for us at this in time. All the blessings Christ will give his angel messenger. All the people believing in the word of Christ that he will be speaking at the last day will be receiving blessings in abundance. It is the golden age of the church of Jesus Christ. Now notice. He also says, regarding the overcomer, him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. A pillar is a very important part of the building. And in the spiritual field, that means he will make him a very important person in his kingdom. And he says, and I will write upon him the name of my God. Now notice, it is the second time a man 
is the bearer of the name of God. The angel of the covenant is the one who has the name of God. According to Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 and on. para que te guarde en el camino y te introduzca en el lugar que yo he preparado. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. And when the angel of the covenant came in human flesh, when he became flesh in the person of Jesus, there was God's name for redemption to die on Calvary's cross and carry out the redemption of the human being to take away our sins and thus to be set free by the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And now, notice something very important. Let's continue reading. We have already seen that the angel of the covenant has the name of God and when he came in human flesh, the Word made flesh, God's name for redemption, for salvation was there. No one else could carry out the work of redemption, but Jesus Christ. He had two very important things, or three. He was the person bearing the name of redemption, God's name for redemption. And he was the bearer of the angel of the covenant, who is the one with the name of God. The angel of the covenant was manifested in him. No one else could do that work. Even if he had the name, he had to have the angel of the covenant manifested in him carrying out that work. And now, in this passage of Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, where Jesus says, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name. Now notice how the name of God and the name of the city of our God and the new name of the Lord Jesus Christ will come manifested in another man. And the one who says that is Jesus Christ, our beloved Savior. If we find that man, that overcomer, in whom Jesus Christ in Holy Spirit will be manifested at the last day speaking to his church then we have found that overcomer who is made a pillar in the temple of our God and upon whom Jesus Christ says he will write the name of God and the name of the city of our God and the new name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the one who says he has a new name. And who is going to contradict Jesus Christ? 
Si él dice que tiene un nombre If nuevo, he says he has pues a new name, then he has a new name. Y él lo va a escribir. And he will write it upon the overcomer. Y ese es el mismo nombre, and that is the same name of our God and it is the same name of the city of our God and it is the same name of the angel of the covenant the angel of the Lord who bears the name of God of whom God said he has my name he said Guardate delante de él. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. And now, God put his name in his angel. And now Jesus Christ has said he will put his new name upon the overcomer. That will be his angel messenger. Así como Dios colocó Just like God put his name up on his angel, angel the angel of the covenant, which is God Dios himself in, cuerpo, in his theophanic body. He put his name in that theophanic body, luego, and then se hizo carne, when he became flesh, God's name for redemption was manifested there. Postre, and for the last Jesucristo day, Jesus Christ tells us he has a new name and he will put it he will write it upon the overcomer and he will also write the name of God and the name of the city of our God and the mystery of the eternal name of God and name of the city of our God and new name of Jesus Christ one man has it The angel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the voice of Jesus Christ for the last day, which is his angel messenger, through whom Jesus Christ will be manifested in Holy Spirit, speaking to his church and speaking to the entire world. We have seen who is the voice of Jesus Christ at the last day. It is the angel of Jesus Christ in whom Jesus Christ will be manifested in Holy Spirit at the last day, in other words, in the seventh millennium, and through his angel messenger, he will be speaking to his church and speaking to the entire world because in the heart and in the mouth of his angel messenger, he will be putting his word, his message pertaining to this end time in the heart and in the mouth of his angel messenger. He will put the message of the gospel of the kingdom so that he preaches it to the church of Jesus Christ, to the Hebrew people, to all the nations, to every human being. And thus, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The planet Earth will be filled with the knowledge of the second coming of Christ as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, as King of kings and Lord of lords in his claiming work. There's also a promise of Christ in Revelation chapter 3 verse 21 that says to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne who sat on the throne of the father the one who had God's name for redemption and in whom the angel of the covenant was manifested carrying out the work of redemption on Calvary's cross. And now, who will sit with Christ in his throne in the seventh millennium? The angel messenger in whom Christ will be manifested at the last day carrying out the work of the last day and he will put his name there and the angel messenger will be the one who will understand that new name 
of the Lord Jesus Christ and the eternal name of God and name of the city of our God. Now we can see that with the manifestation of Christ in Holy Spirit through his angel messenger, the eternal name of God will be manifested and therefore the work of God will be carried out at this end time. And God will revive, in other words, he will give life to his work at this end time as the prophet Habakkuk prayed in chapter 3 when he said, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known to revive. The work is to bring to life, fulfilling what he has promised for each time. And for our time, the work of God is the work pertaining to the age of the cornerstone and dispensation of the kingdom. Lord, revive your work in the age of the cornerstone and dispensation of the kingdom at this end time. Bring to life every promise you have made for the last day for the age of the cornerstone and dispensation of the kingdom and make it known. And to do that, use us at this end time. In your message of this last day, put all the revelation of what you're doing at this end time so that everyone may know your work pertaining to this end time. Put the divine revelation of all your work of this last day. Put it in your mouth, your messenger, which is your voice at this last day. In the eternal name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The voice of Jesus Christ at the last day. That has been our subject for this occasion. The voice of the Lord Jesus Christ at the last day. May Jesus Christ speak great blessings every day for each one of you and for me. And with all our soul, we believe them and they will be materialized in each one of you and also in me. May God bless you and keep you and continue having an evening filled with the blessings of Christ. I leave Reverend Miguel Bermudez Marín with us again to continue and conclude our participation on this occasion.